Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, so this is the weather briefing that uh, will be presented by me and uh, Nunu Muraira, my colleague. So this is the last day of the meteorological uh, summer. And uh, we are going to start, um, as usual, uh, knowing where you are watching uh, this session from. So you can use the drawing uh, toolbar that, that is on the left side of the screen. Um, I think it's OK now. Yep, it is. OK, thank you. OK, so, um, so this is uh, this weather briefing. I will talk about the current weather situation and Nunu will talk about some events from um, previous uh, weeks. Um, so lots of lots of people. OK. Lots of participants. Uh, OK, thank you. So I'm going to move on. OK, so this is the water va vapor image uh, this morning uh, with wind and geopotential at uh, 300 hectopascal. And it shows uh, the jet stream uh, far north and also some uh, uh, deep troughs, uh, one uh, southwest of Iceland and uh, the other one uh, northeastern Europe. And in the middle, you can see this ridge that it's more or less um, behaving like a blocking um, for moving of these systems. Um, there are some frontal systems associated to these troughs, and uh, you will, we will see better in the next uh, slide. And um, the frontal system over northeastern Europe will be more or less stationary and uh, will bring uh, some, um, will bring some, um, persistent rain over uh, this region over here and uh, the Atlantic over the Atlantic and also southern southern Europe there are several low pressure systems that you can see some of them with um, uh, with low amplitude and we can see one here and uh, some some uh, low amplitude some waves uh, look like waves uh, over here, and there is one another trough uh, over eastern Mediterranean, and um, we can see also the um, some branches of the jet stream at this level, so the 300 hectopascal. But uh, in this area, uh, the jet stream um, is uh, better seen at the 200 hectopascal. Um, Look at the bright colors uh, in the water vapor. Uh, so this is me meaning uh, high amounts of water vapor in the upper levels. And uh, with the air mass RGB, and you already know, uh, help us to analyze the, so some dynamic processes such as areas of um, uh, PV anomalies, uh, types of air masses, uh, for example. And here with mean sea level pressure, we can see the both, both systems that uh, we're talking about, uh, southwest of Iceland and uh, northeastern Europe, um, and in the middle, the high pressure system. Uh, and of course, again, the low pressure systems over the Atlantic, uh, Mediterranean and Black Sea. We can even see some, um, so th at this time at 6 UTC, we already have some deep convection uh, over the Black Sea with the, this mes mesoscale convective system over here. Um, there is also a frontal system uh, over south, southwest of uh, British Isles, and uh, this is uh, moving slowly to the east and uh, affecting northern part of Iberia and uh, western France. Uh, the red arrow on the right you can see here uh, in the Atlantic shows um, an area of deep convection that I will mention later. 
and the other uh, red arrow indicates an area where uh, there is a high transport of water vapor from tropical uh, latitudes uh, which is going to turn this uh, this uh, region um, very unstable it already is but but very unstable in the next hours and um, uh, over the western uh, mediterranean sea there is a positive um, positive uh, uh, anomaly of sea surface temperature so we have a good source also of uh, humidity over here um, so this area is uh, important to be monitoring the next uh, hours uh, some examples of products that you can use for monitoring this um, area could be the now casting soft products and of course the day microphysics RGB are uh, one of the examples that uh, could help to monitor this area uh, uh, in the next hours. Of course, these, are, uh, these RGBs, the night microphysics and the natural color RGB, um, it's, uh, they are important to give us um, information about uh, low level features. And uh, there is one here that we could not see with the previous satellite images is the low level clouds uh, associated to the high pressure system. So these low level clouds, uh, we can only see um, in this case with the natural color RGB, but uh, we could uh, have seen with also um, with the night uh, microphysics. And uh, we also can see um, the thick ice clouds associated to the frontal system systems and in the areas of uh, deep, deep convection. So we have the red, uh, red colors here um, indicated uh, uh, high, uh, thick ice clouds and uh, in the night, uh, night microphysics RGB and in natural color RGB we can see some CN colors and indicated the thick ice uh, clouds uh, in this region. Uh, over Canaria uh, uh, Island, we may may see here um, uh, some thick cloudiness, also mainly middle and upper level clouds with high amounts of uh, water vapor and um, uh, quite unstable. So some heavy rain is forecast for the next hours. So warnings for today. So uh, mainly the main the main threats uh, will be thunderstorms. As you can see, uh, here are the, the southern parts of Europe with some uh, convection and deep convection, and also the western part of France uh, and um, this area affecting mainly um, from the the trough that is. Uh, over the Atlantic southwest of British Isles. So um, the, the area of uh, unstable uh, air mass is over, uh, it's a maritime uh, uh, air mass and it's moving inland. And of course, uh, do not forget that uh, we will have also the radiative and orographic forcing. So there is potential for uh, deep convection. Another uh, feature and interesting feature that we can see today, um, it's um, uh, near coast of Morocco is a dust cloud. Uh, we can use the dust RGB to identify uh, the dust cloud, uh, but it's very difficult uh, when it is a thin or a low level dust cloud over sea. Um, and even if uh, the the low cloud, uh, the um, low dust cloud have um, uh, low concentrations of uh, dust particles, uh, dust RGB cannot even detect it. But uh, we have at this time um, in the morning, we have already the natural color RGB and uh, is better to detect low, uh, low dust clouds over C. Uh, and this, the, the reason is because of the higher reflectivity of dust particles compared to the ocean, compare, compared to the water, and uh, there is a higher contrast. And you can see that um, over land, uh, we cannot see the dust cloud. So the visible, um, we c with natural color RGB, we, it's difficult to see the dust cloud over land because of the same reason we do not have contrast and uh, here uh, also it's um, it's also better because we have um, 
uh, we are at low level, uh, at low sun angles. So before sunset or after sunrise. And we can see better the dust cloud because of the effect of forward scattering of dust particles. And um, here's some, some tips. Uh, okay, some color uh, interpretation colors of uh, dust clouds, and uh, you have some tips here. Uh, you can see the main color is magenta, uh, and of course we have uh, different colors um, that can have different shades of pink and purple uh, because of the um, the environment on the, the underlying surfaces, the level of the dust cloud, and uh, we can have different um, uh, information from the 10.8. The uh, you can learn more about dust and dust RGB uh, with um, uh, these are some examples uh, of the resources available at Humatrain webpage. And finally, uh, there is some possible um, tropical activity in the Atlantic uh, in the next days. As you can see on the right side, the tropical storm strike probability from ECMWF. And on the left, the five-day tropical weather outlook from National Weather uh, uh, National Hurricane Center. These are the, uh, the, mo the most, uh, the recent forecasts. And remember the area I mentioned earlier, southwest of Azores with deep convection. So this is the area. Um, so I think my colleagues at Azores will have some uh, um, uh, trouble. <laughs> we'll have to monitor this area carefully into the next days. So uh, this is from my side. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, Nunu, uh, you may continue. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Angela. Uh, I will now also share my my my, my desktop and it in the presentation mode here it is i hope you can see it so i will i will continue now with the second part uh, of the presentation so looking more to the past so angela already covered today's uh, uh, situation i will go back a little bit uh, check the, uh, the the month of august was a very very rich month in terms of meteorology um, so i will just focus on forest fires on dust on convection and on drought uh, that was the selection for, for, for today. So I will, I will start with the situation on the 9th and 10th of August here in Portugal. Um, and you already checked the, the, these, these RGBs, from, uh, as Angela already mentioned, the, the cloud, uh, the high resolution visible cloud RGB and the dust RGB. And so in here you can see it, these two images on the, on, on, on the left are at 17 UTC and the one on the right is at 21. And what I wanted to look at, at is at this feature here. So this is a fire plume on the 9th of August that was already very visible over, over land. Uh, it, and it was related to a long lasting forest fire that happened in our, in a natural park in the center of Por central Portugal. That's Strela, uh, a mountain area, very complex area and uh, there was a, a fire uh, already there since the 6th of august so it, there were many days of, with this with this with this fire of course you don't see it here so easily in the dust rgb it's not the purpose but you can see these colors that angela was mentioning these purple colors around here in the over the ocean or some over over land not the clear magenta that you, you check when you have very strong signal from from dust but one of the things that I would like to mention is that on the on the night afterwards, so from the 9th to the 10th, there was mud rain here in the in this part at least. There was reports, and uh, so this really kind of a, a tracer for for the the, the 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 dust that was that was in the atmosphere. So uh, here is it's an example on on the, this dust signature when the concentrations are not that that high on the next day on the 10th we we had convection developing uh, over northern iberia or northwestern iberia uh, both portugal and spain here is the border in in white 
so this was clearly uh, moist convection. Uh, you you had the the smoke plume from forest fires moving northwards. It's not so easy to see, uh, but you can see uh, this the the land uh, in greenish tones and then in a yellowish tone, and uh, you could see the, the 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 smoke plume. So it's not so easy because the image is very complex. There are lots of information, uh, but that's what was happening at 14 UTC with this uh, high resolution visible cloud RGB. Later, you can see how the, this system evolved to a mesoscale convective system, almost covering uh, all of the Galicia part uh, here of Spain. And uh, there was a wider dispersion of the smoke from the forest fires. So he, clearly, we had for forest fires happening uh, in the same environment as severe convection, uh, which is a very problematic situation for, for forest fire combat. Um, the smoke was not only going to the north quadrant, but also to the to the east. Uh, you clearly had different uh, wind directions at different levels as a, at the source. Of course, this image is, is very rich. And now I would like to give you the opportunity to, to annotate here. And I hope you can check everyone. OK. So you all could now annotate and try to find the, what, what do you think it's the exact location of the fires. And even if you can do it without a loop, of course, you had, if you had a loop, maybe you could, uh, it would be easier, but give it a try. Yeah, I have checked already. Okay, take your time. Some interesting, I see that you are all choosing the, the areas we, outside the mesoscale convective system, which is, of course, the, a good a good idea to start with. <laughs> and you are more, yeah, yeah. of course, I, I'm going to talk about a, a specific one or two specific uh, forest fires. And basically, this is the area, and I will give it, okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Uh, I will just stop the sharing now, and we'll move. Yeah, that. So here, it's of course, it's not so easy to 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 check it with the with with this image. You already have a good perception, but you can confirm it with with some products uh, with the, what we call the hotspot products. This is the fire radiative power from Lensaf uh, using MSG. It gives you um, the, this 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 product gives you in in megawatt. It's given in megawatts, and in fact, you have um, this. Here and someone, some of you have identified this situation here uh, with this big fire, and there was also another one here. So also, the, you, you see this very uh, thin uh, plume here. There was another one. So there were two fires, big ones, difficult to combat in this area of Strela. This is the the national park that I was mentioning before. And maybe you are, of course, given some idea with with this plume moving eastward here. Uh, and that was a good a good way to to see it also. And this is mainly because um, these for these fires were were very uh, large. So you can see here this is a zoom. You see, uh, this is the, the area of Guarda in, in the north in the eastern uh, center of Portugal, and you see how many pixels they they, they, they were. So very big and very intense forest fires producing a lot of signature here in the in, in the satellite. Maybe what you are thinking was this, because in fact, when you see it in very whitish shades, it means that's already a cloud. So it's not only uh, um, it's not only the plume with ash from the forest fire; it's also a cloud, and this is called the pyrocum pyrocumulus cloud. And this picture was taken uh, on the tenth, on that day, on that area. Uh, and in fact, this is a picture that I took from our. Um, from our um, voluntary cooperation website. So people can just put images, they go to our website, uh, and this is, was one of them. So if you want to go there, you can have a, a couple of more. We had many pyrocumulus this month. So when you have instability um, at the same time that the, the forest fires are, are occurring, which is, as I mentioned, a problem. For, for the combat, as you can imagine, uh, though after after the system is 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 created, you can have well all these vertical 
um, vertical circulations that can really affect the, the, the wind at the surface and then make it very difficult for firemen to, to combat the, the fire. So one question now, another, and again, I will let you annotate um, and tick your choice. So do you know, if you know which is the official name of the pyrocumulus cloud, according to the revision of the WMO Atlas in 2019, so is it, and sorry for my uh, Latin pronunciation if it's wrong, but uh, it's, is, is it a Cyrus homogenitus, a Cumulus flamogenitus, a Cumulus homogenitus, or a Stratus silvagenitus? So take your time. What do you think? Okay, for the moment, you're staying with the Cumulus. Okay, that's the first thing that you have to eliminate so you don't want cirrus of course not nor stratus so i guess it's now only homogenitus or flamogenitus so i think depends on, on our language what we use already <laughs> portuguese is a, is a latin language so um for 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 latin origin languages maybe it's more intuitive so i see that at, 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 there is a high uh, or a higher concentration on the cumulus flamogenitus, uh, and that uh, and that is and that is the correct answer. Yes, thank you very much. You're right. So uh, at at 2019, the the pyrocumulus cloud, which which was not still on the on the atlas, was really included, and the cumulus flamogenitus was the the, the name uh, chosen for, for 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 the pyrocumulus. So it's official now, <laughs> for a couple of years. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so continuing, uh, we are in the same day. It's the 10th of August. And now I would like you to go again on this high resolution visible cloud RGB and try to find another big fire in another country that, rather than Portugal. You see here, it's Portugal and Spain. You had this, you remember, it's the cumulus. This is 16 UTC. You didn't see the, the fire the, with the, so much expression on, on, the, on the cumulus development. Um, but on the rest of Europe, this is a tricky one. <laughs> it's a difficult one, I know, uh, because it's a big image. You can focus in many different parts, but just give it a try. Uh, there was, maybe you can use also your memory. If you remember the 10th and 11th again, it continued to the 11th, uh, of another big fire in another country. Um, so I will let you annotate again, sorry. Now I think you can. So now you can annotate. Okay, so I see already two options, at least three options. Four, five. Well, I will I will give you one thing: is that I didn't analyze whole Europe for this day. So you may be right if you don't uh, if you don't get the, the 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 thing that I was I will talk about. So I will not be sure if uh, someone is wrong. <laughs> It might be right, but for uh, let me just tell you that at least some of you have got what I will mention and what I, I was thinking about. Okay, so let me just stop again the annotation. Thank you very much. So I can just move. So this was exactly the 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 the, the plume that I was looking for. So this this was a smoke plume of a fire close to Bordeaux in France. So clearly east east winds and the plume is moving um, over over the ocean. You can see it over land and over 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 ocean, both in both situations. Um, and in fact, this was a forest fire happening in France, uh, the 10th and the 11th of August. And this is an image that shows it very clearly. So um, again, maybe now I would like you to to use the chat. I also have to put my chat here so I can see. So maybe you now, please go to the chat and try to answer here what you think could be the satellite. This is a, well, I didn't use, I didn't, it's written somewhere. So uh, in the in the slide, so maybe, are you in the chat already? I see someone is already starting to answer, which, I was mentioning the satellite. I've already 
Okay, I see OLCI, I will see Sentinel, Vs, is it Vs? Uh, okay, so I see a couple of questions. Sentinel 3, okay, so a little more detail on the number. Yeah. Well, for this, uh, if you well, if you if you did, didn't just look at the image and you see on the legend below, I, I, it's it's Sentinel three. The thing is that in fact it's Sentinel three A. <laughs> um, of course, I don't know this just by looking at the image. I know because I went to this to this uh, link where you can find all these images, and I checked it was three A. Okay, so but yes, it's Sentinel three. Okay, so the next question is which sensor? Um, do you think it's uh, it's this image from? There was already a mention to to sensors, I believe, before. So maybe if you want to repeat it. <laughs> the sensor name sometimes it's not it's not something that we memorize. And uh, I will give you a hand here. It's really the ocean and land color instrument. And uh, I see that uh, there was an answer already on this before and in the chat. So right, yes, O C L I. So they, they have 20. This sensor has 21 bands in the visible and near infrared spectrum, and the special resolution is uh, 300 meters. Okay. So this is why you get you have all this detail uh, both uh, both over land and over ocean uh, on on the on the fire plume. So what time of image is this? Can you give also a, an idea on the chat? I can give you it's an RGB image. <laughs> Just the, the, the name of it. Some to see if someone have an idea on, on how it's called. I see true color, natural color, true color again. Natural, natural RGB. It's close, of course, because you have a natural uh, view. Uh, in fact, it's the true color. Uh, it's the true color because it's really using the the bands of corresponding to our uh, eye. <laughs> Let's see what what we, what our eye would would really see. So the the natural color is not the real true color because it doesn't have the three sensors on the visible, the three bandwidth on the on the on the visible uh, part of the spectrum. So this is a, a true color RGB. So, and this, in fact, um, this this true color RGB is something that it's likely to that you can have for monitoring the fire season in 2024 when the MTG uh, is already operational after being launched uh, and this, this year and having this commissioning and uh, calibration phase next year. So maybe in 2024 we can have something like this already for, from 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 the. A geostationary satellite uh, with images every 2.5 or 10 minutes. So this is the kind of image that we can expect, well, in two years from now. Uh, okay, so continuing, I just let you know that there was, uh, after after this season of uh, uh, fires, uh, Copernicus released this, this, this report. Uh, in this case, uh, regarding Spain, Portugal, and France, with the uh, information on the total fire radiative power measured in gigawatts between June and September, due to the the, the, fire, the forest fires in July and then again in August, you can see the peak here from this forest fire that I was mentioning um, in France and also the one in Portugal, the ones in Portugal, um, but also the ones from July are here, the peaks. These are the, the reds in 2022 and you can see in gray the, the 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 past information between after 20, 2003 until 2021 and you can see how different it is so also if you see the total wild carbon emissions in megatons and, and in this case the evolution is in years so it's between 2003 to 2022 again you can see that france and spain clearly have the highest amount uh, in this period portugal not so much um, but uh, clearly, uh, this uh, this summer has been a very a very problematic one in terms of forest fires in uh, in this part of Europe. So again, I will just show you um, just coming more to the end of the presentation. I will just show you now an example on the 15th and 16th of August, also in Portugal and Spain, 
just to show you that th these satellite images are really being used by the media. This is a, a, a journalist, a very well-known journalist in Portugal, uh, and in the Portugal National News, the smoke from Serra da Estrela National Park was showed in the in the news, in the eight o'clock news. So, and because because the, the 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 wind was already moving to the west, so already projecting the, this plume to to the to the east. Because this is the 16, and I remember that this forest fire in the natural park started at the sixth, so more than 10 days in total. Although there was a small break in the, in between, but the smoke reached Madrid uh, in Spain, 400 kilometers away to the east, and this was clearly the information, and they really showed. Um, this image of Madrid in, in the news. So it was our fault, <laughs> let's call it. Uh, the, the smoke was coming from, from Portugal. So, of course, this, this situation is uh, clearly related to the drought situation that we had, the severe drought that we have having, that we had in Europe up to now. So I, just to finish, I will show you um, a couple of products that you can use uh, to analyze uh, uh, the drought from 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 satellites, this is the the anomalies that uh, from uh, the land surf, uh, land surface temperature uh, product. This is uh, the, the 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 anomaly uh, for for uh, 2022. Uh, it's just until until yesterday, so it's not complete until the 31st, but it's basically uh, the whole month. Uh, note that the, this land surface temperature is for all sky conditions, so there is no problem with clouds. So there are there are no missing values when we have clouds, and this is a very good thing because can, you can really have uh, an homogeneous uh, image. This is the anomaly for August uh, uh, this year, comparing to uh, to the, the 2004 to 2021 median, and you can see Central Europe with the big anomaly. Uh, not as much in, in, here in, in Iberia, also in Eastern Europe, some many countries in Eastern Europe less uh, in, 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 the, in the area of southeast Mediterranean. Just for comparison, I show you here the 2019 and 2018, also with some big anomalies uh, in, in Central Europe and Eastern Europe, but not as high as this year. And in the end, I will also show you um, the, the, the case for 2005. Um, where you can uh, have where this this year of 2005 was was also a drought a severe drought year in Portugal, also Spain. You can see here um, the, the anomaly, but not so much in the rest uh, of of the country of the European uh, continent. That's what I meant. Uh, I would like to thank my, our colleagues from Paul Martins and Sara Caetano for this data uh, here uh, for, from Landsaf. Also, if you want to 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 see the the you, you, if you want to analyze the drought with more products, you can use um, apart from the LST anomaly using the LST. You can check, for instance, the number of hot days. This was a product uh, that was used that was uh, computed uh, checking um, the the number where the number of days when the LST, the land surface temperature for all sky was higher than the 90, 90th percentile. So we have 30 days at most, and you can see that the green here is between 20 and 25, and you see a couple of points here in the northeast of Portugal and many, many areas here uh, over Germany, uh, Belgium, some parts of France. Um, so again, showing the, 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 the big anomaly that uh, we are having uh, this uh, summer, and in particular this, this month of August. Also, you can use uh, vegetation products. This is the, the FVC, which is the Fraction Vegetation Cover cover Anomaly. Again, it's an anomaly again uh, against this, this period of 2004 to 2021. And you can see already that where you have the LST anomaly, of course, you also have uh, an, an anomaly on, the, on, the, on this product on the FVC. Also on the right, on the, on the leaf area index, which is the lie uh, index. They are very similar, uh, and you can see that big parts of Central Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, not all Eastern Europe, uh, have uh, these these negative anomalies uh, on the, on the vegetation. And so, I guess this is my last slide. I will just let you to have some references if you want to uh, to check on, on what I, I've seen. And now I am ready for your questions. Thank you. <laughs>